जैन स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू साइंस क्लास टुडे वी विल टेक अ न्यू चैप्टर चैप्टर 11 लाइट शेडो एंड रिफ्लेक्शन हाउ डू वी सी द थिंग्स अराउंड अस वी सी थिंग्स विद आर आईज बट द ऑब्जेक्ट्स प्रेजेंट इन डार्क रूम आर नॉट विजिबल टू अस व्हाई बिकॉज ऑफ द एब्सेंस ऑफ लाइट इट मीन्स लाइट हेल्प अस टू सी डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स और वी कैन से दैट लाइट इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी which causes the sensation of sight when we switch on a bulb in a room everything is visible to us the bulb gives out light rays in different direction and when this light rays fall on the objects in the room they bounce back from the surface of the objects and get reflected that reflected light enters our eyes and we can see the objects in the room this is called the scattering of light now we talk about the sources of light we have classified the sources of light into two categories natural sources of light and man made sources of light the sources of light that occur in nature are called natural sources of light for example the sun the stars fireflies some deep sea organism and even the moon is natural source of light next are the man made source of light the sources of light which have been made by men are called man made sources of light for example candle tube light electric bulb torch kerosene oil lamp now you can distinguish the natural sources from the artificial sources in the picture so many objects are given the sun light before thundering fluorescent insects a torch stars a firefly a desktop fire a table lamp a burning candle and the mobile phone you have to tell apart the natural sources of light from the artificial one let us move on based on the property to emit light we have classified the object into two categories luminous and non luminous objects an object that gives out its own light is called luminous object for example the sun the stars a burning candle firefly fire and so on an object that doesn't emit light is called non luminous object for example animals birds plants chair table book wall and so on. even the moon is non luminous because it reflects sunlight the next classification is based on the property of letting light pass through them here we have classified objects in three parts transparent translucent and opaque transparent objects allow most of the light to pass through them for example a sheet of glass clean air clean water vacuum diamond cellophane the second category is translucent the objects which partially allow the light to pass through them are called translucent objects for example muddy water tissue paper oiled paper cloud fog butter paper and frosted glass the last category is of opaque object these do not allow the light to pass through them there are many example of opaque objects around us doors wall human plants all are opaque objects now let us talk about rectilinear propagation of light it means that light travels in a straight line we can conduct an experiment to test this take three pieces of cardboard make a hole in each at the same height arrange them parallel to each other at one end we will place a burning candle and from other end we will observe the candle now we are able to see the flame of the candle it shows that the light rays reaching our eyes travel in a straight path if we shift one of the cardboards we will not be able to see the candle flame because light travels in a straight line only this property 
is the rectilinear propagation of light. Children, you must have seen a dark shape behind you when you walk in a sunlight. That is your shadow. We, if we have to define shadow, we can say that it is an impression of an opaque object which is formed in the opposite direction of the source of light and behind the opaque object. In your case, the source of light is sun, the opaque object is you and the dark shape behind you is your shadow. Now let us talk about the conditions that are required for the formation of shadow. There must be a source of light. An opaque object is also required. Why? Because the shadow can only be formed when the opaque object obstructs the light or when it stands in the light's path. Now, where do you see your own shadow? On the ground. So there must be a surface on which you can see your shadow. The third condition is a screen to receive the shadow. You will also notice that the shadow is always black in color. The size of the shadow depend on the position of the source of light. You can observe that the during morning time and evening time, the size of your shadow is larger than you. But in the noon time, when the sun is over your head, your shadow is smaller than you. So we can say that the object's shadow may be small, large or the same size. It's depend on the position of the light source. Next we have pinhole camera. The pinhole camera is based on the principle of rectilinear propagation of light. Students, you can make pinhole camera at home. You need a medium sized cardboard box. You can also use a shoe box. Blacken the inside of the box with black paint or you can use black sheet. With the help of needle, make a tiny hole of the size of pinhead on one side of the cardboard at center. This hole is called aperture. If the hole is made white, the final image will get blurred. So remember, the smaller the hole, the sharper will be the image. At the opposite side of the pinhole side, we will paste a translucent sheet, which can be butter paper, ground glass or tracing paper. This sheet will work as a screen. The pinhole camera will now be ready to use. To get the image with pinhole camera, you should place pinhole towards the object. Now observe the image formed on the screen. You will notice that it is inverted or upside down. It gives the details of the object, the color, the shape and the size. The image formed is smaller than object. It is a real image. There are two types of image, virtual image and real image. A virtual image cannot be obtained on the screen while a real image can be obtained on the screen. You can also obtain numerous image by making several holes in the pinhole camera. Law of reflection. See the diagram given here. At the bottom, there is a green line, which is a plane mirror. A plane mirror is a sheet of glass whose one side is painted and other side is plain or smooth to reflect light. A ray of light which strikes the refracting surface is called incident ray. The ray of light which returns back into the same medium is called reflected ray. And the dotted red line at the center is called normal line. The normal line is always perpendicular to the mirror. The angle formed between the normal line and the incident ray is called the angle of incidence and the angle formed between the normal line and reflected ray is called angle of reflection. Angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. 
If the angle of incidence is 40 degree, then the angle of reflection will also be 40 degree. Now, the reflection can be of two types depending on the nature of the surface which the light ray strikes. In regular reflection, the surface is smooth and the incident ray and the reflected rays are always parallel to each other. Regular reflection of the light can form an image. Irregular reflection. In irregular reflection, reflected rays scattered in different direction. So the image cannot be seen. Let us move on. Children, you must have seen your image in mirror many times. Let us examine the properties of your image. Your image is virtual because it can not be obtained on the screen. Your image will be erect. Your image will be at the same distance behind the mirror as you are in front of the mirror. In the plane mirror, your right side appears to be the left side and your left side appears to right, right side. This interchange of right and left sides of an object and its image in the plane mirror is called lateral inversion. You can test this effect by standing in front of mirror. Raise your right hand and you will find that your left hand has been raised in the mirror. Let us move to the last topic of the chapter, the periscope. The periscope is a device which gives us a higher view than normal. It is used in submarines to spot other ships without being noticed. A person can see around corners and behind a barrier with the help of periscope. It is based on the law of reflection of light. Periscope is consist of a long tube with two holes. Two plane mirror are adjusted at the corner which are parallel to each other. And these two mirrors are arranged at an angle of 40 degree, 45 degree inside the tube. Let us understand the working of periscope step by step. The light rays coming from the object fall on the plane mirror at the top of the tube. These rays are incident ray and get reflected at right angle and then it falls on the plane mirror at the lower end of the tube. Here, the rays are again reflected and turn through the right angle and enter the eye of a person. This is how an object that is not on the same level can be seen in a periscope. This is all about the chapter. Thank you. Have a good day. Jai Hind.